Welcome back to another video, everybody. Have you ever wanted to can your homebrew, but been driven away by the outrageous price of a can seamer? Well, keep watching because things just got a lot cheaper. This is the October Design Benchmark Can Seamer, and it is about to make canning a lot lighter on your wallet. What is my relationship with October Design? Well, they sent me this can seamer for review, and as usual with these products, there is no money that is changing hands here, and there is no requirement to say or not say any particular thing. If that's ever required by a company, I'm just simply not going to review their product. So, I can say what I want to say about this, and I certainly will say what I want to say about this. And I do that so you guys can make informed decisions about the products that I choose to review on this channel. And uh, I think that's important because this is arguably the most effective affordable can seamer on the market for home brewers nowadays. So it comes in at $499, so it's still not exactly a cheap piece of equipment. However, it is still 50 bucks more affordable than the cannular can seamer and $300 cheaper than the October SL1 or the cannula cannula pro. So really quickly, it's a standard format on these review videos. I give you a breakdown on how the product works, what makes it unique, and then we talk about how to use it properly. And then after that, we'll talk about pros, cons, and overall kind of impressions on it. So let's go ahead and break this down. And the question of whether or not to can your homebrew is a touchy subject, I think, among homebrewers. There are a number of benefits for canning versus bottling and vice versa. There's a lot of arguments for and against either side, so this is ultimately a decision that you make as a homebrewer as to whether you want to just put your beer in something that's apparently sexier nowadays, or if you just want to uh, have like more durable shipping ability, you know, that sort of thing. Canning arguably has a ridiculous price of entry uh, when it comes down to getting a can seamer versus like a $10 bottle capper. There are a couple reasons though I decided to kind of move towards canning eventually anyway. The whole subject of canning versus bottling is enough subject material for an entire video uh, separately from this one. So we're not going to even dive into that today. Until the benchmark came out, there really were only two options for homebrewers looking to can their beer. The October Designs SL1 and the Cannular from Kegland. Uh, the October is about 800 bucks, made in the USA, comes pre-calibrated straight from the factory, uh, right out of the box, and um, has a lot of, you know, really good benefits. It's coming from a company that primarily makes can seamers for like breweries and tap rooms though. So we're talking more like crowler size cans and just larger volumes of cans that are going through October's machines. That's what they're designed for. And October's can seamers are designed to work with any type of standard uh, 202 end. And what that's talking about is actually the, just the type of can lid that you get um, and how that seams into the aluminum can itself. So there are several different kinds of 202 style ends. Um, this is called a B64. It's the default one. It works just as well as any of the others. Um, and it works for 12 and 16 ounce cans, which are pretty much your primary types. And you can get those from any supplier. On the other hand, there's the cannular from Kegland, which is about $550. And that's a lot more affordable for home brewers. But it's not made in the USA, depending on whether that's important to you or not. It's made in China. Uh, it does not come pre-calibrated out of the box. You will have to do the calibration yourself. And it works only with Kegland proprietary cans, which means you can't get them from anywhere else. And oftentimes people don't realize that until they look at the shipping. But looking at those two can seamers, you're either paying more up front uh, for the SL1 and doing less work to calibrate it and find cans that work with it versus paying less up front and paying more down the road and doing a little bit more work for the cannular. Um, but that is all changed now with the benchmark because this undercuts the price of both of those models. So basically you're paying about $300 less for something that is essentially an SL1 and carries all of the same benefits of that just without the motor. Just like the SL1, it is made in the USA and comes calibrated right out of the box with uh, the ability to accept any kind of standard can that you could find. So where does it get the power to seam the can from if it doesn't have a motor? Certainly not a hand crank. It comes from this, a tool you probably already have in your house. So there are no electrical parts in this entire thing. And at the very top is basically the same thing you would find on the back of a drill bit. So as long as your drill works on a 3 8 inch chuck or larger and can do about 200 to 800 RPM, which is usually the screwdriver mode, uh, then you're going to be good to go. And since canning is a low torque application, unlike milling your malt, uh, it'll actually work well with a cordless drill. And because it doesn't have a cord that's tying it to an outlet and it doesn't have that motor sticking out the back, it's actually a smaller machine than both the cannular and the SL1 and can go anywhere. 
So that's actually really great. Um, it's a feature that works really well when you're space constrained like me. Another nifty thing too is this splash guard here actually does not come standard on the SL1 that you're paying more money for. Uh, so it's kind of a nice bonus to have. So now I'm gonna give you a demo on how to can your own beer using the Benchmark Can Seamer. So I'm gonna demonstrate now how the can seamer operation works, how the whole canning process works. What you need is a beer gun of some kind that you can purge the can with CO2 from the bottom up with and also fill beer directly from the tap. So I have the Northern Brewer Last Straw uh, bottle filler, which is also a effective beer gun as well. Other options are the Blickman beer gun or a couple others. But as long as it purges from the bottom up and fills your beer can effectively, it's uh, gonna do the same job. You're also gonna need a bucket of sanitizer. Uh, you're gonna need your can seamer and of course, some kind of drill. Here I have my Milwaukee drill. Also highly recommend some sort of containment for your canning area. So I have one here for where I'm gonna actually be filling the cans. I also have containment for the benchmark seamer as well. The process isn't super messy, but it can get kind of messy. So it's just good to have something there to catch all of the uh, unintended spillage. You're also gonna need empty cans and lids. In this case, I'll be canning up my New England IPA uh, that I've had on tap for a while. Still not oxidized, everything's fine. Uh, so we're gonna get these into cans and uh, send them out to a family gathering for Christmas. So the first thing you gotta do is sanitize your can. Too easy. Place your can in your containment area. Purge with CO2. I usually like to purge at about 10 PSI for a good five seconds. Then begin to fill your can with beer. It's a good idea to get all of the oxygen out of the line before you fill your can when you do this. So just make sure that you have purged the line of oxygen uh, and filled it completely with beer by filling a glass of beer or something like that for your first pour. So fill all the way up until the foam starts to come over the edge like that, then take it out. Take your lid, sanitize that, and then cap on foam. So you see a little bit come over the edge there, that's why this process is a bit messy. Then, then you wanna take your can seamer and put this on the chuck. Uh, and then it should sit there by itself, raise it up, might need a little adjustment. Raise it up until it makes contact and locks in. Then start the drill. Once your can is seamed, just dunk it off, clean it off real quick and then you should be all set. Have a nice clean seamed can there. So the process of seaming the can is actually not too difficult, but it does take a little bit of time just to get used to figuring out just how much pressure to apply when you're seaming it and just how long to hold the rollers engaged. The first step is to make sure that your can seamer's operating arm is in the zero position. And what that means is just that neither of the rollers are gonna engage the can when you set it in there. So you set your can in, you lock it in place, you get it spun up, you get your drill spun up, and then you start to slowly push forward on that lever until it moves to the one position, which is where that back roller engages the can. Once that roller starts making contact with a can, you're gonna feel some pressure. Keep slowly and gradually increasing pressure until you hit a mechanical stop at the very back uh, of that range of motion. At that point, you will feel the can finish that first part of the seaming process. Then slowly pull the lever back towards yourself, towards the two position, which is where that second roller makes contact. Again, you're gonna feel some pressure as the can begins to seam itself fully. Keep pulling back again until you hit that mechanical stop. Once you get to the stop, hold it for a couple seconds and then return to the zero position and your can should be fully seamed. It is important to always push the lever forward first and then pull it back towards yourself, never the opposite order because then you will not successfully seam your can. Make sure you're also giving yourself enough time at each stop to ensure that the seam is fully sealed around the entire perimeter of the can.
So I've actually used this for about three weeks now and it's been pretty great. It's uh, It took a little bit of getting used to though and I just kind of wanted to share a couple of the tips that I, I have <laughs> from my experience, uh, just things to be aware of. Um, the first is make sure that you're not setting your drill speed too high. If you're really pushing it past that 800 to 1000 RPM zone, you're gonna start slicing through the top of the can as you try to seam it because it's just going too fast. Um, and obviously that's not a great thing. So just make sure you're you're keeping it in that screwdriver mode that's gonna be the lower end of that spec. This drill runs about four to 500 RPM. So it's like right in the middle of that zone. And I found that to be kind of a nice sweet spot for it. The second thing is make sure you're spending uh, time with about six to 12 cans, just deliberately figuring out how it feels when you get a good seam versus a not good seam. You'll feel it when the seam is actually finished seaming, but depending on the actual speed of your drill, that may be uh, more or less time than you expect. On the flip side though, make sure you're not spending too much time engaging that lever uh, because that can be bad for the seam as well. Lastly, make sure you get some calipers and actually check the seams on your cans. This is actually factory calibrated out of the box. You're probably gonna be fine. I checked mine anyway and I found it to be within 0.05 inches of the recommended uh, seam widths uh, on either side. So I was actually good to go. So every so often, just make sure you're checking your seams uh, with the calipers to make sure that they're actually within uh, the tolerances required. So if you need to adjust the can seamers calibration at any point in time, it's pretty easy to do so. You just need a 3 8 inch wrench like this one and a 5 30 seconds Allen key. There are two wheels here that perform different parts of the seaming process here and here. That's why you have that two-step process where you take the lever, you push it in and you pull it out and then you return it to the center. So if you need to adjust either of them on the other side uh, of the kind of seaming bar thing here, you have these two uh, adjustment screws here. And first you just loosen that uh, nut with your 3 8 inch wrench, and then you'll adjust the set screw with this 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. To be aware, one full rotation of the set screw is an adjustment of one hundredth of an inch. Uh, so make sure you know how much you need to adjust before you actually start messing with these set screws. So really quickly, we'll break down our pros and cons. So for pros, I really like the fact that it's the most affordable can seamer on the market right now. I can't argue with that. Uh, secondly, I like the fact that it works with any can that I can find with a standard end on it and it doesn't have a proprietary can. That's really good to me as well. I also like that it's straight out of the box calibrated. That is a huge deal because you can spend a lot of time trying to figure out the right calibration on these things. I like the fact that it's not difficult to put together and you have all the required tools uh, included with the kit. I like the fact that it is such a small footprint and I can take it anywhere uh, that I can take my drill. But on the flip side, if you have a dedicated area for canning and you just want it to stay in one place, uh, it comes with mounting holes on the actual feet here so you can straight up mount it to a bench um, and it will be fine. It's pretty solid and relatively heavy though, so it actually doesn't really move around all that much when you're canning. There really aren't too many cons, to be honest. I actually highly recommend this product overall, uh, but we'll, we'll go into the cons anyway. Firstly, it is still expensive. I mean, for what it is, $500 is a decent amount of money, especially for a piece of homebrewing equipment. And even though it is still the most affordable one on the market, um, it is not all that much more affordable than the cannula. It still doesn't really reduce the barrier to entry financially into canning uh, that it could. I think it would be good to see it have a little bit of a drop in price from the $499 that it's currently asking for. The last con I have is the instruction manual is just not good. Um, it's It doesn't have a good explanation of how to calibrate and how to use this. It has diagrams in some places where it doesn't need diagrams and it has paragraphs of words in places where it needs diagrams like the calibration procedure. However, in their defense, October does say refer to our YouTube channel or our website to look for instructional videos on how this stuff works. Um, and they do have good videos that break down how to calibrate it, how to check your seams and all that good stuff. It is out there, but when I'm setting this thing up and doing it the first day, I kind of want to just read through the manual and make sure I know everything I need to know right then and there. Overall though, this is an outstanding piece of equipment and I'm really, really very happy with it. Uh, and it will be sticking around in my brew house and I think you're gonna start to see a couple more cans making their appearances in the videos and they're gonna be seamed by this guy. This is definitely a fantastic piece of equipment. So if you are in the market for a can seamer, understand that I highly recommend this one, but make sure you're doing your research do additional research beyond watching my recommendations and watching my video. Make sure you get input from all different kinds of sources and uh, determine whether or not it's right.
right for you. But if you do decide that it is right for you, I've dropped a link in the description where you can go to October's website and see this can seamer. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys own a can seamer, let me know down in the comments what your experience has been with it and how you like it. If you want to support the channel, please check out my t-shirt store, which is down below the description box, where you can find some awesome t-shirts. Not this one, this is Elementary Brewing Company's t-shirt, so make sure you check out his channel and buy a t-shirt from him as well if you like this one. Uh, but otherwise, if you want to support the channel in other ways, I also have Patreon. My Patreon supporters are fantastic people. They are driving the production behind this channel, and I couldn't be doing this the way I'm doing it right now without them. Lastly, I also have an Amazon store in the description box. If you're interested in buying home brewing equipment that's available on Amazon, uh, it's on that store. If I recommend it, if I've used it, it has my endorsement. Um, so go check that out if you're interested or in the market. Uh, if you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm also available on Instagram as the apartment brewer, uh, where you can see slightly more frequent content updates and kind of get an idea of what's going to happen on the YouTube channel in the future. Last but not least, if you're still here, you guys are awesome. You guys are my true fans, and I really appreciate you. So until the next one, cheers.